Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose ten are found there. Abraham's argument convinced the Lord, and the Lord promised Abraham, For the sake of ten righteous, I will not destroy it. And the Lord went up from Abraham. That evening, as the two angels arrived in Sodom, Lot, Abraham's nephew, was sitting in the gateway. He greeted them and urged them to wash and rest and feast in his home, which they did. But before they could lie down to rest, all the men of the city, young and old, surrounded the house and shouted to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so that we may know them. Lot stood his ground and confronted the crowd and said, I beg you, my brothers, do not act so wickedly. Look, I have two daughters who have not known a man. Let me bring them out to you and do to them as you please. Only do nothing to these men, for they have come under the shelter of my roof. But the mob would have none of that. Stand back, they yelled. This fellow came here as an alien, and he would play the judge? Now we will deal worse with you than with them. Then they pressed hard against Lot and came near the door to break it down. But the angels of the Lord stood before the crowd, and they struck with blindness the men who were at the door of the house, young and old, so that they were unable to find the door. Then the angels of the Lord told Lot the outcry against Sodom had become great before the Lord. Take your family out of this place, for we are about to destroy it. When morning dawned, the angels once again urged Lot, saying, Get up, take your wife and your two daughters, or else you will be consumed in the punishment of the city. When they were outside, the angels said, Run for your life, flee to the hills, and do not look back or stop anywhere in the plain. For if you look back, you will perish. Then the Lord rained on Sodom and Gomorrah sulfur and fire from out of heaven, and he destroyed those cities and all the plain and all their inhabitants, and everything that grew on the ground. Lot, his daughters, and his wife struggled to escape. But Lot's wife behind him could not resist the temptation. She looked back and became a pillar of salt. Early the next morning, Abraham went to the place where he had stood before the Lord, and he gazed down toward Sodom and Gomorrah and the plain, and all he could see was the smoke rising, as it is described in the Bible, like the smoke of a furnace. Lot escaped to the hills and lived in a cave with his two daughters. Worried that they would have no children, the older daughter said to the younger, Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, so that we may preserve offspring through our father. So they made their father drink wine that night, and the older daughter went in and lay with her father. He did not know when she lay down or when she rose. On the next night, they also made Lot drink wine, and this time, the younger daughter lay with her father. Both the daughters of Lot became pregnant by their father. The older bore a son named Moab, who is the ancestor of the Moabites. The younger bore a son named Ben-Ami, who is the ancestor of the Ammonites. The Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son, and Abraham gave him the name Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was one hundred years old. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast. On the night of the celebration, when Sarah saw Abraham's son Ishmael playing with Isaac, she became jealous and said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for he shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. 
Abraham was caught between the love for his wife and the love for his son. God's voice came to Abraham and told him to do as Sarah had asked. It is through Isaac, God said, that offspring shall be named for you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar. He sent her away along with Ishmael. They wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she left the boy and sat down opposite him a good way off, for she had not the heart to listen to his cries and watch him die. Do not let me look on the death of the child, she cried. God heard the cries of Ishmael, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened Hagar's eyes, and she saw a spring of water. She took some in her hand and gave Ishmael a drink. Ishmael and Hagar survived their banishment. Today, Muslims trace their ancestry to Abraham through Ishmael. The pain and suffering of Ishmael and Hagar pale by comparison, however, to the ordeal that Abraham suffered when God challenged Abraham with his cruelest test of faith. In Genesis 22, 2, the Lord said to Abraham, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. What must Abraham have felt? Should he obey God's command to slaughter his son? He dutifully saddled his donkey and took his son Isaac and two of his young men. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and went to the place that God had shown him. On the third day of their sad journey, they reached the place God had chosen for the sacrifice. Abraham told the young men traveling with them to stay with the donkey, while Abraham and Isaac went ahead to worship. We will come back to you, said Abraham. Abraham carried the fire and the knife, while Isaac carried the wood. When they reached the spot, Abraham erected an altar. Isaac questioned his father. The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham then responded with the heart-rending words, God will provide himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. When Abraham had completed the altar, he seized his son Isaac and tied his limbs together, as he would ritually tie the limbs of a sacrificial animal. He laid Isaac on the pyre. He then reached out, and without revealing his feelings, he raised the knife and prepared to kill his son. Only then did the angel of the Lord intervene. Abraham! Abraham! he called. And Abraham responded, Here I am! And the angel of the Lord said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from him. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven. By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, 
and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessings for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. Genesis 22, 15.